Boom, boom, boom. What's up, guys? It's your friendo with the innuendo, Safe Greg. As you know, that's not a slang thing. It's just uh, I have a passion for safety. So here we go today with a new tutorial, how to synthesize the sickest, the most amazing kick drum. Roll the intro. <clears throat> no, we don't have an intro. Okay. All right. Well, let's just get to it then. Okay. So here today we're going to synthesize a kick drum. And this is a pretty simple process. What you want to do is you're going to grab uh, analog. Uh, it's just the best for this. And you're going to just turn off these oscillators. You want to take this noise and basically you just want to have it loud. Okay. We, wanna, we don't want to filter here. Let's see if we got it. That's starting to sound good already. So that's good. And we're just going to kind of go like this, you know, kick drums. This is sort of what they sound like, right? And then the next thing you're going to want is a phaser, okay? So this is the easiest way to make a, uh, a, a kick drum. And we're just going to take the phaser, put it down to one notch, and we're going to turn the feedback all the way up, right? So it should sound a little bit like this. That sounds great. Maybe we'll put more notches, actually. That's nice. Yeah, that's starting to sound good. Okay, cool. So we'll just get that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take <clears throat> a utility. And we want our bass to be banging, right? So we're going to take the utility, turn the gain all the way up. Actually, we also have another gain here. So we're going to turn that one all the way up. And, uh, and then, you know, we don't want the gain too high. So we're going to take a limiter and and put it after there if I can find the limiter throw that limiter on there there that's really nice okay okay and so now that's that's sounding good already okay so that's the beginning of our kick drum right and now what you want to do is after you've got that sound that's pretty good but we're gonna need it to be a little bit different so we're just gonna throw on the overdrive and we're going to crank the dry wet and that's going to be at full. And now that's not going to be loud enough for us. So we're going to want to put this uh, at the end of that there. And just to be safe, you know, you don't want your gain going too high. So we're going to throw an OTT on there also. Okay, so now it's starting to really sound like a normal kick drum. And that's great. So, so now it doesn't quite have as much bass as we might want it to, right? So I'm going to grab Corpus throw corpus on there right we got okay yeah turn down the position the position uh, means like you know when you have a membrane like this you know you can position it like this or like this or like this like it can kind of turn around in the air and that's what we're controlling here with the position and I don't want to be wasting a lot of CPU on this um, so we're gonna want it on on eco actually maybe low is good enough here right Okay, that's starting to sound really good. We'll take the width and we'll turn that all the way down. Right? Okay, so this is starting to sound pretty good. Alright, let's try a couple more notches in there. Okay, that sounds good. And now, as you know, it's a little bit loud, but it just takes a moment to, to go away. So we'll just we'll just keep it like that. And so, as you know, when you are making a kick drum, you want it to sweep down a bit, right? So, we're going to go ahead and uh, throw a MIDI note in here, right? Throw in your C3. That's, yeah, that's starting to sound good. You're going to maybe want it to drop a bit faster. That's nice, okay. Maybe even a little bit less, actually. And, uh, and okay, so as you can see, we're really controlling everything here. We're getting everything really nice and fit. And now what we need is a filter to take out some of those high frequencies. Now, when I use a filter, I like to turn the resonance all the way up because as you know, uh, nobody knows what this knob does. It just means better when you turn it up. So that's good. So we'll just slop that on there. That sounded, okay, yeah. Maybe we want a bit more kick, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Okay. 
Okay, that's starting to get there. All right, so now what we're gonna need is we're gonna throw an envelope follower in here, just like that, okay? And we're gonna map that envelope follower. Sorry, that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of noise there. But this is all just a normal part of uh, making a kick drum. This is how it's done. So we're gonna take an envelope follower and we're gonna throw it, or we're gonna throw a compressor on there, right? Kick drums always compressed, right? Compressed 100%. If you don't compress, I'm not impressed, right? That's what they say. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the threshold down, and we're gonna turn the ratio up, right? So now that sounded good, right? And actually we want, um, sorry, we don't wanna turn the threshold all the way down. What we're looking for is if we turn it a bit up, we should be hearing a bit of that bass, right? That's good, that's really nice, okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna map our envelope follower directly to the output. So now we're getting, now we're getting somewhere. Actually, we wanna pull the threshold back up a bit. Oh yeah, here we go. Maybe turn up the attack a little bit. This, yeah, this is starting to sound good. Okay, all right, we're getting there. We'll put a little bit more, yeah. This is good. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, and that's starting to sound like a kick drum now. That's really nice. Okay, so that's good. Now that we have that, we can group all of this actually. And we're gonna work on the uh, top layer of our kick drum. Right, so if we just pass that through, that's nice. Yeah, that's starting to sound good, okay? So now we have, this is our bass, right? As you know, kick drums, they need a lot of bass, and this is gonna be our top, right? So we're just gonna do a little bit of top surgery here, um, make sure everything is getting really hard and, and strong. And that is done usually, <clears throat> usually this is done uh, in, in this way. First, we're gonna need a little bit of erosion on there. Right, okay, that's starting, that's starting to sound good. Okay, and we're gonna get a little bit of, of uh, the vinyl distortion, right? Vinyl distortion, everybody knows. If you don't use vinyl distortion, you don't know what you're doing, right? Okay, that's good. So we have that. And now with a little bit of redux, let's try changing the amount of bits here. Yeah, that's, yeah we're just dialing it in here, right? That's good. Good, 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 good. Turn on the DC shift, right? That's gonna that's gonna really turn things up for us, okay? So then what we're gonna need is um, we're gonna need to, to make it a little bit shorter, right? So to make it a bit shorter, what we're gonna use is the gate, obviously. That's how you make sounds short, right? Right, so we're just gonna take the gate, we're gonna dial it in, pull the threshold down just so we're just coming up above this, and we're just gonna turn all of these down. That's nice. Okay, cool. So we've got our top. Our top is ready. We're going to throw drum bus on there. Yeah, it's coming together here. And I think we're getting a little bit uh, not enough lows. So I don't know if you know this, but there's this trick to get more lows. You just have to cut a little bit at 34 hertz. That's good. Yeah, just like that. And then you just turn up the boom. really nice okay yeah give it a bit more push maybe this way no it's better this way obviously okay so that's good now we're just gonna throw um, a little bit of compression on that <clears throat> and we'll do some slight uh, EQing which as you know it's best to do uh, with echo that's the easiest way to do your EQ. And if anybody tells you not to use echo for EQ, then that means that they don't really know what they're talking about, so you should not hang out with that person. Okay, now we're starting to get there. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Oh, we still have this compressor over here. That's good. We're gonna pull the threshold down a bit. Yeah, that's nice. A 
little bit of that peek through. Yeah, that's good. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Okay, and we're gonna just turn the output gain down a little bit. We wanna make our kick drum discreet, right? You don't want it to be not discreet enough, right? Turn the go ahead and turn the boom down a bit now that we've dialed it in. Okay? So that's going to be really nice for that. So we're just going to pull this down a bit more, actually. And what we're going to do, actually, pull the attack up. And we're coming into sort of the most important part of the process here. OK? And at this point, we're going to go ahead and really add the, the corpus, right? This is a crucial part of the process. Now, when you're working with corpus, the best way is not to use the dry wet here but we're gonna make a dry chain here, right? So this is gonna be our dry chain. This is gonna be our wet uh, chain, right? And they say wet, they call it wet because it sounds more uh, liquidy. So that's gonna be a little bit more what we want, right? So then we can start uh, messing around and I like to use the pipe, I think. That's what I like. starting to sound nice. We'll go full wet. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, let's turn down the width here a bit. Oh, that is, yeah, that's starting to sound really good. Okay, and we just need to take out a little bit of the highs in the dry chain. That's starting to sound nice. You know what we can do also? We'll just turn this sound good amount up a little bit, and we're going to sweep this down a bit too here. That's nice. Okay, and we'll pull out a little bit of this decay. That's good. We're still getting a little bit of that ringing, which we want. The ringing is good. Um, but we're going to do this a little bit too. Still getting a bit of that rim. So we'll use this to come down afterwards. Oops, that's a bit too much. Oh. Oh, that's maybe too much. Yeah, that starts. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm maybe use a get a bit of distortion on that. That's a bit too much. Just a tiny bit. That's a bit too much. Okay, I think we're just peeking here. All right, so now that you have your kick, you can throw your drum bus on there just to keep things safe. That's good. Now we are getting this sort of uh, continuous bass coming through here, right? And we want to deal with that, right? So the way that we can deal with that is uh, actually just with this good old gate. Okay, that's coming together. Let's try a different uh, uh, thing here. Maybe the beam will do it for us. That's nice. Okay, so now our kick drum is really starting to come together. <coughs> And as you can see, that's, yeah, that sounded really nice. Okay, so that's really good. And we're just going to throw that into a saturator. Just get a little of that woomph, you know. Pull this down a bit. Yeah. A little bit like that. That's, there you go. And uh, yeah, so when you're done that, uh, that's going to be uh, pretty close to the whole kick drum process. Now, every time you want to put one in there, you're going to need to duplicate this, this whole thing, right? So say I want to, let's say we're going to use this to make a, a normal house track, right? So there you go. Oh, I locked the automation by accident. You're going to want to unlock that. 
can even play around with this a little bit more here. Maybe we're going to want to pull a bit of this down. Yeah, that sounded really good. Yeah. Okay. And now, um, <clears throat> once you're done with that, the best thing to do is just go ahead and uh, bring up Splice here. Yeah, I'm going to grab Splice. And we're just going to grab a kick from here. Uh, and and, uh, and we'll copy that one over. And then you're going to hit this button over here. There you go. That sounds great. Okay? So that's how you synthesize a kick drum. Super easy. You know, just throw this process together with analog. Uh, you can save it as a, as a thing, but only amateurs do that. So... And just remember this last step of, uh, of uh, just grabbing a kick drum sample because they're all, you don't really need to synthesize your kick drums. Come on, let's be honest here.